Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for, for coming at a very short notice uh, to, this, uh, to this event. We made this event open to, to students, but mostly targeted to uh, students from Africa and especially uh, Nigerian students, which I think they're in the majority they are here at the, the university, if I'm not mistaken. My name is uh, Pavlos, Pavlos Pavlo. I'm the Vice President for Enrollment and Development here at the university. And together with my colleagues, uh, Alina, Andrea and Maya, we are the reason why some of you are here. So if you want to blame someone, then this is the team. Okay. As a university, you know that we have been promoting uh, University of Nicosia, Cyprus-based education for a number of, of years in different countries. Uh, cautiously, we are making efforts in the different countries where we promote the university as an option to students, as an option for European education to students. We are, uh, want to be part of what we do. So it's not a matter of going to a country, doing promotions, doing seminars, and then convincing students uh, in order to come. But we would like to set up structures and have partnerships where uh, students can feel that we are part of the community where we are. Uh, and definitely, it's one part of been there in, uh, in, uh, in Africa and been there in Nigeria in, in particular. So uh, part of the belonging, part of this belonging in the community where we do promoting the university and recruiting, and part of this uh, being part of the society is to actually give something back to what we, uh, we get from you of being here, you know, the happiness of, of you being here, the involvement in, when you've been here. Now, Moving on to the theme of the day, of the day as well, uh, Nigeria is definitely uh, represented here in big numbers of students. And there is a lot of interest uh, uh, from other students, uh, thanks to you that you know, you're posting your experiences and other uh, people want to explore Cyprus as, an, as a destination. Uh, getting to the theme of what we do today, Nigeria as a footballing nation, I think, um, in a sense, and my colleague at the back, uh, Professor Nikos Kartagoulis, uh, he takes part as, a, uh, as an expert in FIFA. And most of the studies, I think, Nico, that come out is that Nigeria would be definitely the footballing nation, something that would actually go beyond what happened in 1996 with the, uh, the Olympic Games. Nigeria is on the world scene. So there's a lot of, of interest about football and sports in general in Nigeria. And this is where we see ourselves in, in being part of this, of this activity. There are many talents and talent agents and talent academies, football and talent academies in Nigeria, where they do scout the different states, the different villages for talents. Now, our proposal, our proposition onto that is that as a university, we are going to be hosting these talents. We are going to be hosting these talents under something which we are going to be branding as uh, University of Nicosia Unique Football Development Academy. So students, talents, footballers in Nigeria would be having a home here, as you do, but will have also the opportunity of playing professionally with coaches, being placed in teams here in Cyprus so they can uh, develop and explode their, their talent. So this is something that has not been done before. Usually you have academies that will help students up to high school, but then linking it into university has not been done. In a sense, it has not been done, but it has been thought of for uh, some of the progressive, some of the more entrepreneurship uh, states in Nigeria. Uh, this novel thinking has been, has been done before. Uh, as a matter of thinking, now is the time to, move, um, to actually materialize uh, this. One example is one state in Nigeria, Sokoto State, that we are honored to have uh, Honorable Commissioner uh, Farouk Yabo uh, here with us. The thinking and some of this has been done before. So without me getting into the detail and explaining what uh, has been going on in Sokoto State as an innovative way of linking this training, identification of training talents in footballs and linking it to, to academia and what it can be done further 
in the whole of Nigeria. I will introduce to you our uh, guest today, or one of our guests today, because you, you are here for another guest as well. So one of our guests today, uh, Honorable Farouk uh, Malami Yabo. He is the Commissioner for Local Government and Community Development in Sokoto State, the Federal Republic of Nigeria since 2012. He has also been Commissioner of Finance uh, in the same state from 2007 to 2012. Honorable Commissioner is a graduate of public administration for uh, Payero University in Kano, and he holds a master degree in public administration from the same university. He also attended not very well-known university, a university, a small university called Harvard University, uh, the Kennedy School of Government uh, for postgraduate programs in public fi financial management, and uh, was at the University of Manchester, Manchester Business School, where he studied international public sector accounting standards. His professional membership includes the Charter of Public Accountants, Charter of National Accountants, Fellow Institute of Economics, member of Charter Institute of Taxation in Nigeria. He recently received a National Honors Member of the Order of the Federal Republic by the President of Nigeria, uh, Dr. Kutlak Jonathan. He's also received uh, resolution of recognition by State of Georgia, uh, Parliament in Atlanta, uh, in the USA, and the honorary citizenship of the State of Georgia in the United States by the Governor uh, Nathan Deal. He also received, uh, he also is a recipient of the USID by the Millennium Development Goals, recognized for his uh, revolutionary policy in, in maternal and child healthcare programs, and a lot of those programs he is heading uh, in Sokoto State. He also initiated an empowerment program uh, using soccer for the youth in Sokoto, as I was saying before, in collaboration with ex-Nigeria International, uh, the guy that we will be meeting later, uh, Tijani Papagida, which eventually crystallized to Spora Academy. One of the beneficiaries of this program, Usman Mohammed, is now the captain of the Nigerian under-29 national team, which I think is called the Dream Team as well. He, along with some famous ex-England international, uh, John Fasciano, and the former director of marketing of CNN, international Edward uh, Borden, founded the Millennium Sports Foundation to support the less privileged kids in Africa to excel in choosing their sports career. So this is the connection based on the experiences of what has been done with what we are trying to do, what I explained later, uh, earlier, what we are trying to do here, and I would invite Honorable Commissioner, to just give some of his experiences of what has been done in, in Sokoto. Uh, good afternoon. I must say that I'm not the celebrity today. Very soon the celebrity will be unveiled. But I would like you as Africans and as Nigerians to join me in commending this noble initiative of the University of Nicosia. The University of Nicosia got into Africa or Nigeria, I would say, just a few years back, and they are already giving back. This is something that we must thank you for, Dr. Pablos, the president of the university, and the vice president on community relations, and everyone here for believing in Africa and for giving back before you have even gotten to your target. I am here to share with you what the university and what some of us in Nigeria are trying to do with the university in order to bring potential students who have talents in other areas, but perhaps maybe coming from less privileged uh, families are not able to get enrolled in schools and have their professional career beyond where they find themselves. This is a novel, I must say, idea. This is a novel concept, and it has received our blessings, and it has also received the blessing of those that are interested in moving society and societies forward. Uh, in Sokoto State, our simple model, when I was the commissioner for finance in 2007, we got to Janiba Bangira. Everyone here knows who Tijani Bangira is. He played for Nigeria, of course, Olympic gold medalist, 
and one of the few people we have from the north. You know, Amokachi, of course, is from the north, Obi Mikhail from Jos and Garbalawal. But when he came to Sokoto, my ministry and the state government decided that we should use him as a role model to mop up the unemployed youth on the streets and at the same time giving them the opportunity to showcase their talents and perhaps get to the, where they want to be. And that simple idea worked. So we got to journey in Sokoto for 18 months and he worked with all the 23 local governments we have. He was able to get 300 boys. It was not just about soccer. He was able to share his own story, how he started, and how he picked his bag and went to Mena to play with Niger Tornados. And while he was doing that, the national team invited him to play in all Africa games in 1991. And that was the turning point. And so is the same story with all the players that we have. But the product that University of Nicosia is inventing, which we are proud to be part of and to be recognized with, is something very, very unique. One, they are going to sponsor talent identification in Africa. There will be, of course, uh, potential students and talents from all over the world but they are giving us that unique priority to take 70% of the slots, which I will thank you once more for this uh, wonderful opportunity. <laughs> there are three different scenarios that soccer academies operate. One, you have the clubs like Real Madrid, you have Ajax, you have Arsenal Soccer Academy. These institutions, what they simply do is they get the talents, take them to their own soccer academy, and then they build them as potential members of their first team. Then you have also those that are doing this on commercial basis, and we have seen a lot of scouts that have taken a lot of soccer talents to European destinations, to Asian destinations, and to so many destinations. And once you are not able, either because of psychological or physiological reason to make it, you will end up being dumped. So this is what University of Nicosia is collaborating with us to reverse. They are going to identify young boys in the beginning, and their next plan is, of course, to, to form a, 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 a women's soccer team or a girls' soccer team that have finished high school. So they will give them admission with the consent of their parents on sports management or science, and they will bring him here. They will bring them here. If they are able to make it well and good, they will, those students and those successful talents that have been identified that will eventually make it will know that they now have obligations to their communities, that someone has done something. Because if I can say here, 99% of you probably are not state sponsored. You are here from the pulse of your parents. And uh, we have sponsored so many students, but not in the University of Nicosia as a state in Sokoto State. We have over 1,000 students that are enjoying the state scholarship. We spend over $20 million a year to make sure that we send students so that they can bring, one, the exposure and courses that are not available in Nigeria and in Nigerian universities. But the most important thing is that exposure. And we're having a lot of issues with students who are going to our conventional state and federal universities. Because when they do the aggregate, $10,000 plus upkeep that you pay for a student, you can keep other students in public schools in Nigeria, maybe about five or six. So you have that, but you always have to tell people that people must go out to learn best practices. People must go out to see other opportunities. People must go out to bring back those good values. So it's not everybody that has to come out. But if you have just 0.5% that bring back this exposure, I think our country and our continent will be better. We have got the present Minister of Finance, Okonje uh, Iwela. 
she, she, she got an incredible international exposure in terms of public financial management. She was at the World Bank for many years, and she got to the position of MD. She was almost uh, selected as the president of the World Bank. But now she is the Minister of Finance and the Minister for Coordinating the Economy. And she's bringing that best practice back to the country. We have got Aganga, we have got Dr. Mansour, we have got Dr. Pate from Bauchi, all these people, because they have worked with international organizations, they are bringing back their valuable experiences, which is what Africa needs at the moment to continue. So I will say that we will continue to thank you. And uh, Nigeria, and particularly Sokoto State, will be very happy to subscribe to this. And we believe other African countries should benefit, like Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, Kenya, Cape Verde, from this scheme. But take it from me, we will continue to give you all the support you need, and we'll make sure that because these people have done very well, have represented our country and our continent very well, that is the incentive that is driving the university. So I'm still urging you to continue to be good ambassadors of Nigeria and our continent, because Nigeria does not have an embassy. But very soon, for this strategic collaboration that the educational sector is having with the University of Nicosia, our government, I'm sure, will very soon establish some bilateral link. My final note is uh, Martin Luther, because of the few incidents that happened just two weeks ago with Chelsea player, is that people should be judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content and the quality of their character. And this is what Cyprus stands for. This is what University of Nicosia stands for. And this is what the soccer fans should stand for. And this is what the rest of the world should stand for. Thank you very much. Thank you. Honorable Commissioner, thank you very much. And uh, as I said, it gives us even more pleasure to be able to be uh, initiating this in association with not only your state, but to expand it in uh, the whole of Africa. Well, you've heard of uh, some of the small names in football, like uh, Cristiano Leonardo, Leonie Messi, okay. uh, Diego Costa, Suarez, Di Maria. These were the juniors when our guest of honor today has been playing at the level where he has been playing. All these people were his juniors. They were looking up to him. And the team of Kanu, Amokachi, uh, Papa, Iro, times twice, uh, two of them, Tozi and others, uh, the, the people that won the 1996 Olympic against Argentina. Anybody remembers the score? <laughs> Too young to, to remember? 3-2, Three, two, exactly. It's the kid from Gaduna State uh, that rose up to play for uh, Ajax for eight years. Not an easy thing to achieve. He's one of the Nigerian uh, flying eagles. I think we can start with the, some of the, the flying eagle goals. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great happiness to uh, introduce to you our guest of honor today, uh, Lovingly known as uh, TB or Tijani Papagide. Okay. <laughs> Hello, good afternoon. I think I will start by introducing myself, even though I had the commissioner and our colleague here already introduce you, and most of the guys here already knows about me, but some not. Anyway, my name is uh, Tijani Babangida, and I was an um, ex-Super Eagles player, also an ex-international. I've been in Europe all my life from the age of 17, but how it all started, it's amazing, I can say, because it's a dream of each and every Nigerian or African youth to play in the top level of football, either representing the country or playing professional. The point here is, after my secondary school education, 
my father don't want me to play football, which is to all all kids, it happening. And I remember when I went to him one day in the morning and lied to him. He's a lie. And I told him, listen, I got um, admission into university in Niger State. That is a state in Nigeria, like a two hours drive from Kaduna. And I told him that um, they are going to give me admission, but I will use it playing football and studying. And that's how he allowed me, and he told my mother, okay, he's going to, to school at least. <laughs> and I left. And after just two years, I become very popular in my country. I represented Nigeria. I find myself in Europe just before I was even 18 years, just in one year. It happened so quick, so fast. And when I went there, you find out that uh, you have a problem of, uh, of culture, you have a problem of the weather and how you can get up with everything. And I did all I can. God helped me. I played the first year in VVV in Holland. From there, I went to Roda and Ajax. I represent Nigeria in many games. Maybe you guys will still remember. Still. <laughs> you guys can still remember. But the point here is um, life after football. That is one very important thing that, uh, that we have to educate. When, when they approached me with this project, when I finished my football, I met a friend, Honorable Farouk, which he came with an idea of me going to Sokoto to start with academy and just, just taking all the, the, the young privileged kids in, in the state, which I did. And from there, really, I just get the interest that life after football is more important that we can be able to Find kids. The kids are not only from Nigeria, but all over Africa. We are going to look where we can find these kind of players, and then we can bring them, and then they can have education. You can be, at the end of the day, if you are good, you become professional. Not all the players become professionals. If you are good, you become professional. If not, you already get a free education, which we can be able to thank the university for cooperating with us. Anyway, I won't say much, but if if you have any questions, I'll be available to answer. Thank you very much. Please. I think I think in this case we, we are open to to your questions or suggestions you may have because for us it has been a short time since we have come to to put this together. Because when I went to the airport to pick honourable commissioner, I saw someone in the background coming as well. And uh, when I, I was there with uh, the migration officer waiting uh, uh, to, for our guests to arrive, and when I said, well, I think I know that guy. He looks like someone that was playing for Nigeria. And the guy turned to me and said, that is Papagita. <laughs> so we didn't have a long time to plan uh, the, the initiative, but we were, when we put it together, we thought this is definitely something we, we ought to do. But since we are at the start, since we are at the gelling together of this idea, we are now open to your suggestions, questions, not only for the initiative that we did, but to Tijani as well for you know, his experience and whatever you want to ask him. I know you have classes, most of you, you have classes at uh, some point soon, but uh, if you want to ask anything, this is the time. If you see what is happening now with the national team, since we left, it's not really like the But I think the problem is, we left the national team just like that. If you guys remember, when we went to the National Cup in, um, in, in Senegal, Brazil, just before the World Cup, in, in sorry. Yes, just before, just before the World Cup, all the set of the players were dropped from the team. If you remember, just two weeks. So how can you make a team now in two weeks to go and represent Africa or to represent Nigeria in the World Cup? Normally you have the youth, you start with the under 17, you make the under 17 more stronger, you make the under 20, we play the same system because before we come, you find Shemu, Mojibani, you have him, you have a team with all these big players, mm -hmm. and then you go and find a similar player like them, similar players like uh, like the Rashid Yekin, then to come and fill the space. But they didn't do this. And they will just rumble the team, go to work of everything, go back. But for now, 
like I told you now, already, most of our mates are coaching in the national team. Amun Ki is now the coach of the national team. Uh, Manu Gaibai, you may not know him, is uh, doing the under 20. Very good. And you have Keshi, it's all our mates, and then you have Siasia with under 23. So they are all coming now. I think if you give two more years, three more years, the, the team I saw now playing with the, with the, with the flying eagles now. Yeah, even just two days ago or three days ago, our oh, under 23 went to Gabon. I hope there is no Gabon this year. We went to Gabon to squash them four in Gabon. So that is, uh, that is a good one. So I think that uh, Nigerian football is coming, but it takes a time. First of all, I want to thank the university and um, thank also the Honorable Commissioner and uh, our great legend as well. Uh, I want to ask this question out of curiosity because I don't know if I got this wrong, but it's like the target market is towards uh, bringing Africans, you know, so go to and Nigerians and all that. So what happens to the ones that are already here in the African society? Because we have our own soccer team here, and we're over 30 people. Yeah. And we play matches. The last time, the last match we had was against the European University, and we tried them. <laughs> And the reason we did all this is because since I've been here since 2012, we've never had any African player playing in the school team. And we have been trying our best to push it to the school. And one thing, one thing they do is they tell the Africans, the blacks, to come for trials. And when you go for these trials, they'll make you play 90 minutes. And at the end of the trials, they'll tell you you can play. And I went to them, being the president of the society, I went to them and I related this issue to them because Africans, you know, with this we are saying, we feel, we, we felt like there's no place for us in the, in the school team. And if you're successful with the school team, you have scholarship. And most of our players, they are very good. Take, take it from me, if they are very, very good. <laughs> Because on our own, we tried coming up with a team and actually got some, uh, some sponsors that said, okay, we could come up with something and we we'll represent the African society in Greece. But then they said, well, they need to speak with the university because they saw the match we played and they got interested. So I want to know the, the situation of things. What happens to the African team we already have here now? Old school. Now the old school. <laughs> so the ones we already have. Can't we add them to this academy or let's create another program for them and see a way of um, putting them to different clubs and making life easier for them because they have this dream and they really want to play football. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Uh, it's very, very important also to understand the concept, you know, because this concept was introduced to us by the university of because they are just some three days back and we said we are not going to take any further action we want to interact with the students but the most important thing is this is a non-profit making organization which is an arm of the university that instead of spending so much on advertisement or on doing other things they think they can help the less privileged kids from Africa. It's not just Africa, it's a global initiative. But at the moment, even FIFA is putting a lot of emphasis in soccer development in Africa because we have a product. Apart from the crude oil, which you need refineries, you also we have a lot of soccer talent in Africa. And Nigeria being the largest population, of course, we have more. And that is where we are battling with them to give us more quota and then they can go to Ghana uh, per population then before they start distributing to Peru and, 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 and all that thing. Also, all we need to do is to refine these players. And also, I was talking to you about the model of the off-takers. Uh, Tijani was uh, sponsored by Globalcom in Nigeria. He and some other ex-international. They worked for almost uh, 10 months. To, they, they went to four countries of course, Nigeria, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, and Togo. They identified 40 
talented uh, footballers. So all the Globalcom did after getting the entire publicity was just to take them to watch a match in Manchester. So when you finish this talent identification and you don't have an optica or a child that fails to make it professionally, he should be able to have a certificate of some sort. So what the university is doing, they are going to subsidize or remove the total scholarship fees for uh, kids that are talented, that have maybe just high school. They are creating the other department where the vice president of community relations is heading. It's trying to come up with a tailor-made program, maybe a diploma, because most of the, the school cannot sponsor them perhaps maybe beyond two years. So they are going to collaborate with their other subsidiary inter-college to get a, a diploma in sports science and sports management and sports psychology and mentality. Because you see, a lot of African people, like what our ex-international educator, <coughs> syndicator did, he needed a psychologist. He was a very fine player in South Africa, and he was off the pitch when he went and hit the Argentinian simply because he did not have the professional and scientific guidance to manage his anger. So there are a lot of people also that you bring as professional footballers or that are you know, sourced by scouts and clubs, but because they have not gone through any sort of psychological molding, so they, their behavior tend to stop them from progressing. So uh, of course we didn't know that the African uh, you know, association <coughs> has. So we will try to make sure that some of the soccer talents you have already in the university will be integrated in this. But remember, most of you, just like my daughter that is joining you from this week, the parents are paying. You understand? But we are trying to get those whose parents <coughs> cannot afford to send their kids to get this kind of degree or the, 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 you know, an opening to their professional career. So, so, so his emphasis on talent identification is first somebody from less privileged family. So that whatever endowment, whatever scholarship they are, and some of us and every other organization in Nigeria that is trying to be part of this noble initiative, <coughs> we always want to help someone who has the challenge, who has the certificate, but he doesn't have the means. And which I think you will also partner with us, because some of you will, at the end of the day, people will want to put their own stipend to make sure that that boy that is in a village that has the soccer talent and have at least five to six credit should be able to benefit from uh, this scheme. So this scheme is non for profit, but uh, insofar as you have talent already existing in the association, then I see no reason why the academy should not integrate them. And at least this forum has opened that new vista of opportunity. Thank you. I think we're starting with the boys uh, first and then see if that can be expanded. That's a different valid answer. But the lens can, can also, you know, always be there if they wish. Well, when I was a kid, I had different cards of players, but none of them were signed. So this is your opportunity. We've got our colleagues there, uh, Media Zone here, which we want to thank for putting this together in so such a little time. So we made a, a YouTube, or we are going to be doing a YouTube video where this event is going to be uh, promoted. So you can send it to through channels of the university or your own Facebook to uh, colleagues back in, in Nigeria or wherever uh, to be promoting what we have done. But since we've got Tijani here and this is the one lifetime chance opportunity of getting a signed copy of a card. I will be getting the first one, sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then, <laughs> absolutely. So we've got an opportunity here of, you know, coming up, meeting, asking the questions informally now. So thank you very much for attending. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner, for being here, and especially Tijani for being here. Okay, I get the first one. 
So you can ask anything you want informally, you can uh, come up, we can get the pictures done and everything. Um, we actually uh, came to establish uh, collaborations with the University of Nicosia, which we've started doing since 2013. As Commissioner, Ministry for Local Government and Community Development in Sokoto State, Nigeria, I, I brought some municipality chairman, and uh, the university organized that study tour. And we also visited some the mayor of Nicosia, uh, Troblos municipality ministers, and uh, and so on. So that has encouraged us. Then apart from that, uh, University of Nicosia has established a recruitment uh, center in Nigeria and a lot of uh, uh, Nigerians and African students are showing significant interest. One, because of the English factor. Uh, you know, two, it's a European Union uh, accreditation. But what we are celebrating today is something very, very unique. And we are very proud to be associated and recognized with this noble objective. Uh, this is the first time uh, a structure like this is, is coming on stream, which is a, a dual career uh, pursuit. So you have people and you have children who are very, very talented in different sports fields. But because their parents will always insist they have to get the degree or they have to go to school, so, so you lose those talents. So this non for profit initiative by the University of Nicosia is something very, very unique that will support the African, uh, uh, you know, talents who, when they are coming uh, as students that, that, that will get some sort of degree or diploma, even if they are not able to make it professionally. Uh, two, if they are, then they know that it's a community-supported initiative, so they have obligations and responsibilities to other less privileged uh, uh, children. And, and from what I'm seeing, they are putting a lot of emphasis on talents that are coming from uh, less privileged societies, which is very, very good. And the fact that they have also decided that Africa will be part of uh, the initial you know, uh, uh, sports that, uh, you know, that are going to be uh, made available. So, so, so we are very grateful for that. And, and we are going to give them as a government and as individuals all the support for this program to, to succeed. What will take us is going to be a, a very, very, uh, not only ambitious program, but something that uh, it's, you know, will make somebody uh, feel happy that he has done something that is uh, morally, you know, good. Uh, because if you combine professionalism, sports professionalism with education. This is the missing link. And even FIFA knows that. You know, a lot of people, you have different uh, segments of people, you know, running or organizations running soccer academy. But the off-takers, if you are not going to be there to make it to a club, then you have your degree or you have your certificate. So that can, you know, prepare you for other endeavors. Yes. Thank you. Maya. Well, I'm going to talk about the experience of today, of course, and um, I'm very happy to be part of this. I'm very happy to see that we have a lot of students here that are interested in sport and interest of football in particular. And I'm very happy to see that uh, I even work with them together. Well, personally, I can say I'm very happy because I, I, I achieve all what I want to achieve in sport and uh, won a lot of titles and um, I'm satisfied, happy person in sport. Of course, uh, they are already here, they study, and they should just go ahead and finish the education. And if, they, if it's possible for them also to, to combine sport and education, it's very good because education is number one. I want to say a very big thank you to the university and for this initiative. I think this is the best the university has done for the African society and for all Africans, and I, I know that this is the first thing, the first step that has been taken by any university in Cyprus. It has never been done in any university before. So I want to commend the university. And um, as a president of the African Society, on behalf of the society, we want to say we are happy, we are grateful, and uh, we give kudos to Honorable Commissioner Mr. Farouk and um, our legend, Tijani Bangida, and uh, Mr. Pavlos, Pavlo, and Everyone, everybody, everybody, and um, we must say we are very, 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 very grateful. Thank you. 
I think it's a really good thing because me personally, I used to think like Nigeria used to pick players based on connections. But from what I could see today, I, I can tell that they're really putting up efforts to encourage people with talent and have no opportunity, you know, and it's, it's, it gives me hope for the people, that, you know, and I'm happy about it. And I want to thank the University of Nicosia for, the, for this kind of experience, you know. Mm, for the future, I believe it's going to be great. This is just my first month here, and with everything that is happening, I believe it's going to be great and wonderful in Cyprus. As a University of Nicosia, we have an obligation in uh, the countries where we do promotion of the university and we promote Cyprus as a destination uh, to have uh, a way of being part of the society where we are uh, convincing students that uh, their education and their future uh, would start by Cyprus being the destination of the University of Nicosia. And in giving back to the happiness that it gives us to host students here, is also to give something back. And what we announced today is the development of the unique uh, soccer development academy, which is a way of uh, scouting for talent in, in Africa in general and expanding uh, wider later, providing the students with a place here at the University of Nicosia where not only they can explore their talent through coaching with uh, our guest that was today event, Tijani uh, Papagida, but also the support of uh, the states, and we've got Honorable Commissioner uh, Yabo uh, Farouk uh, that has done this in uh, Sokoto State. So we are taking the initiative of creating this uh, partnership in Africa, I would uh, call it, of uh, scouting for talent, bringing them here, giving scholarship to these uh, talented kids, with the support of coaches and with the support of the academic community of the university, and they can explore not only their talent, but academic potentials as well. So uh, I want to thank uh, Commissioner Farouk for supporting this, and the living legend of football of, of Nigeria, Tijani Babagita. So gentlemen, thank you very much for being here at the University of Nicosia and for helping us to launch uh, this event. Thank you very much.